Hi, thanks for joining me again. Uh, in my last video, I made a bench or it was more a coffee table. Uh, and uh, I showed in my process, the process for, uh, I think I was doing the leg tenons on that one. And uh, this is the finished product here. It's got a walnut top, apple legs, and uh, I just used cherry wedges for the tenons. But this is the finished product. Um, it's already going to a new home, which is cool. I've got another walnut slab right here that I intend to do the same thing with, uh, with some slight differences. So this is a coffee table, and I didn't put cross members on this. So it's not going to be the strongest construction in terms of like, you don't want somebody standing on it, I think. Um, and it shouldn't be used as a bench. But if I put cross bracing on the legs, it'll be much sturdier. That's what I'm going to use that one for. So people will have an option whether they want to use it as a bench or whether they want to use it as a, as a coffee table. Um, otherwise, the process is going to be about the same. And so today, we're going to show the process of this start to finish. Um, and uh, it is a little bit of a lengthy process, and, uh, but I hope you enjoy it. So this walnut slab, uh, I've already debarked it. It's been sitting in my shed debarked for about three months. It's important to get the bark off of it because that's what the insects are going to eat and then burrow and lay their eggs inside the wood and rot the wood. So I debarked it before. Um, it was sitting outside in the weather for about six months, maybe seven, before I moved it to the shed. It's fairly dry. Now, it does have signs of insects. Well, certainly insect damage. My guess is that there are still insects in it. Um, and so before I do anything else with this log, I must, I must get rid of all the insects that are damaging this internally, right? So the way that I do that is I use a kerosene, not kerosene, a propane tank, a propane torch. I burn it thoroughly. The whole thing heats up to massively uh, high heat, kills everything inside. And then I'll clean all the charred layer, uh, all the charred layer of the wood off, sand it, sand it off, and then I can start doing the construction. But I've got to kill all the bugs first. So I do have my handy dandy torch here. There it goes.
So that should hopefully kill everything in there. And um, get it prepared for working with. Now I can't touch this, so I'm gonna let it cool while we choose the proper wood for the legs. So out of my wood pile, I decided to uh, take out another piece of walnut. I was deliberating for a long time because the walnuts make really nice tops. I've got about four, maybe five walnut logs and I couldn't decide if I wanted to keep making these like table or bench type things with them. Um, and the other bench I made was a walnut top with apple legs. So there's contrasting colors, but I think that I'm going to go with all walnut and maybe the wedges, I'll choose a very different looking uh, wood just for a little bit of a color accent. So uh, we are going to go ahead and split this. I need four legs, by the way. Um, I think the preferred coffee table height, at least as far as I'm concerned, is going to be about 16 and a half inches. Just so happens that this log is cut at 17. It's not straight, but the low point is at 17. So I do figure that I've got some um, something to work with there. Granted, the top is checked and cracked, but I think that's going to be okay for the tenons um, and the feet. I don't think it's going to be an integrity issue. So, so I'm good with that. This log happens to be the exact height that I'm going to want it. So I'm going to go ahead and split it. I've got different tools here. I'm not so great working with the fro, so I'm not sure that I'm going to use it. But I do have a series of wedges. And by the way, just as an FYI, so this little $30 axe from Home Depot, or maybe Lowe's, one of the box stores uh, from Fiskars, is uh, sold as a splitting hatchet. And once you get a good sharpen on it, the metal is very soft. It takes it takes an edge really easily and really quickly. I just use a sharpening puck. Uh, it does a pretty good job in splitting. And prior to that, Fiskars, I had a Gerber axe for like 15, maybe 20 years. Gerber, I think, is made by the same company as Fiskars. This one I just bought as a camping hatchet a long, long time ago. It broke. I use the head now as a wedge. Um, so we're going to go ahead and try to split this log in piece it, four pieces, by the way, and made oak, spalted oak head with a mulberry handle. Oh, smells so good. Neighbors.
by the way, really hot and humid out, which is why I'm sweating like a pig. <clears throat> so I've got two legs which are pretty big and then two legs which are not going to be as big. But I think I'll be able to get them all to the same uniform size. All right, so that's split. Believe it or not, log is warm enough to touch. So now that the legs are, the wood is split for the legs, we're going to go back to the tabletop, get it sanded off, back to its original beautiful walnut color. Because right now you said just see a chunk of charcoal. Oh, the humidity. Okay, here is where I deviate from my all handmade things because sometimes you can't do things by hand all the way. Uh, none of us have 85 hours that we can put into a piece of a single piece of work, right? So um, I did acquire a steel brush. It was like free, I think my father-in-law got it from from this free online trading thing he asked me if i wanted it hey a steel brush i never used it had it in the shed for like four years now i found a use for it so it's all good so i'm going to use the steel brush to remove the charred surface from the log and restore the log's original uh walnut look so we're going to do that now and uh See how that goes. I'm not covered with charcoal. It's amazing. But my hands are. Well, okay. Um, satisfied with that. I'm probably just going to come with a little, uh, I'm trying to think, uh, a, um, a sanding sponge. I have different grits. Um, so I'm going to take a look at what I have. I might just do it with a 20, uh, 220 grit real quick. Um, and that'll take like, I mean, that'll round out any of the sharper bits and cuts that the uh, steel brush just made and also any chips and smooth out uh, a few other things on the log without taking out um, like characteristics. Two, 220 is pretty good for that. Um, so we'll do that real quick. Okay, I didn't have any 220 sponges um, here. I got it in the house, but not here. So I've got a 600 um, grit sponge which is actually really really smooth it's one of the sponges i use to smooth out the top but i'll just run it over real quick on this i think it'll be just as good as the 200. i'm just trying to take out rough rough parts i'm not trying to take out any of the character of the wood um, 
just things that are like skin grabby, you know? And any of that charcoal, if it's still on there. Okay, moving back into the workshop for now, I need to square up the legs. Do froze have to be like super sharp or something? Or do they have to have one bevel instead of two like for instance this one's got a double bevel you know is that is that not the correct profile for a fro i have no idea i really have, have to look into that Oh, my block's scooting off. That's one, three more. Okay, took a much needed lunch break. It is not getting any colder outside, that's for sure. All right, so I've got a leg up here in a vise. Um, my first desire is going to be to get it cleaned up and square. I'm gonna use a draw knife in order to do that then i'm going to determine where my feet and my tenon are going to be i think for this particular uh, bench i think i'm going to make them uh close or similar to the same diameter so they're going to get tapered down on both ends um, i didn't do that on the other bench i kept the feet a little bit wider than on the tenon so anyway uh we're going to go ahead and shave this clean it'll be much smoother it's going to be not square but it's going to be rectangular and then i'll determine again where the tenons are going to be the feet and the tenon and then we'll get it down even more than that um, if anybody's interested this is just a flex cut five inch draw knife and um, 
it's just what I got. It's kind of like middle of the road, I think. But it works well. I'm pleased with it so far. Now, if you don't mind, I'm just going to put on my leather smock because I don't want to have a happy accident and slice through my chest at a moment of carelessness. And I suggest that you take precautions too. Oh, by the way, I meant to say something about this. If you guys are out there with a, uh, with a torch, you know, don't be out there with Crocs while you're torching your wood <laughs> or sandals or flip-flops. Uh, wear leather shoes, leather boots, because the heat from that torch goes out about two, three, maybe three and a half feet. It'll melt your rubber. It'll melt rubber shoes like Crocs. I'm positive about that. And it'll definitely do damage to your feet and your toes. And, uh, like if you're kind of like a hobbit and you've got hairy feet and hairy toes, you'll definitely singe them off. So yeah, anyway, while you're out there torching, you sturdy leather footwear, please, for your safety. Just to the side.
Okay. Okay, now, using my bushcraft auger, hand auger, there's another thing it's called. can't remember now. If I remember it later, I'll let you know. Um, I'm going to use that to... I'm just going to score the bottom and make a mark where I want... Uh, my tenon to go. And I'm not very scientific about it. <laughs> so, I'm just going to say, like, there. But that's just to give me a point of reference to when I want to take some meat off the bottom of that. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. All right. You see that's a core mark there? It's not, it's not even in the middle of the thing. Um, maybe I should. Maybe I should make it in the middle of the thing. All right. I think it does matter. In the end, I changed my mind, and I think that I am going to put it in the middle of the thing. Okay. So... Yeah, so I decided that I'm going to have to put it in, in the middle of the thing. Otherwise, my feet won't be straight. Okay, I just scored it. And so now you see, if we get some light on it, it's going to be the middle one there. And I'm going to want to... Uh, remove material to make space for my tenon make i can't explain but i'll show you for the sake of the video i'm just gonna mark this with my sharpie so it comes out in the video better and that's going to be my tenon i'm going to clear all the way around it and taper this down so that I have a taper leg. It is now, from the last bench that I made, um, that half of log was approximately four inches thick. And so my tenon will need to be at least four inches long. I'm probably going to want, want it to be much longer than that. Um, not much longer than that, but longer than that, so I have some room to play with. I can get it all the way through the log and then cut it off and wedge it. So, and I also need some space to taper. So while the tenon itself might need to be only four inches, I think that I'm going to start my tapering at six. Okay, just roughly. So what that means is I start to work my work down from my six inch line there. And I'm working towards the center where this is going to be either the tenon or the leg. I mean foot, yeah. And so this is going to take a while. I want to do that on all four sides. So I suppose just for illustration, I'll follow this line. That should be six inches as well. I make lots of assumptions, never backed up by any measurements. Let me know in the comments. 
that makes me an ASS. Because you know what happens when you assume. think my watt vice is wide enough to receive this entire log. We did it. All right. going to transfer my line down just by sight. Walnut is so beautiful and smooth. All right. Just transfer one more line. thing rotated Okay, here's what I consider to be finished tenon for now. So, diameter of this tenon is gonna be one inches at the tip. And I'm probably gonna take it just a little bit thinner than that because what's gonna happen is I'm, at the end, I'm gonna wanna cut a slit in the middle of it 
and then put a wedge through. So this tenon actually needs to be slightly smaller diameter than one inch in order to fit the tenon. Now, I have tapered it down, um, but it's quite possible that once it goes into the log, depending on whether the log is four inches thick or not, I may need to taper it down further in order to get the leg to go all the way through the hole in the log because I like to have an exposed tenon. It's a through tenon. So, all right. Um, yep, that's definitely the tenon end. The foot's going to be over there. I won't make it one inch thick. I'll make it a little bit thicker, um, but it'll be closer to that.